Hi everybody and welcome back to Redstone Productions. Today we look into the Genelec AD351s and we'll discuss the importance of correct monitoring in professional studios. When I started as a mixing engineer, one of the main issues I was struggling with was the fact that my balance would not properly translate on other systems. So I would get a lot of revision calls from mastering engineers about my low end being either too loud or too soft. Every time you place a speaker in a room, the end result of your listening experience will be given by the quality of the speaker itself plus the acoustic environment where you place the speaker in. Many producers and engineers use headphones to get the acoustic issues of the room out of the equation. Unfortunately, we know that after about two hours of blasting music through your headphones, you'll experience your fatigue and thereby lose perspective on your mixes. For this reason, in 2014, Genelec released the AD351s, a three-way coax studio monitor with built-in DSP that listens and corrects to the acoustic imperfections of your control rooms. All right, let's look into it. Powered with 150W Class D amplifier for the dual 8.5-inch woofers, a 120W Class D amp for the 5-inch driver, and a 90W Class AB for the tweeter, they used the Genelec Minimal Diffraction Enclosure to eliminate off-axis coloration, while the coax system and the Max Directivity Control Waveguide ensure super precise imaging. They are capable of delivering 110 dB SPL of 1 meter, and their frequency range goes from 38 Hz to 21 kHz with plus or minus 1.5 dB. They come equipped with a vibration decoupling isopod stand to improve sound imaging definition and you can position them both vertically or horizontally without any problems. They feature one analog XLR and one AS-CBU digital input, one AS-ABU throughline to daisy chain it with multiple speakers and two RJ45 ports for DSP control. They also come with the traditional dip switches on the back to manually control the EQ curves of the speakers. They are some of the greenest monitors when it comes down to power consumption, thanks to their intelligent signal sensing that puts them on standby when not used. In order to use their built-in DSP, there is an optional GLM kit, which includes their USB audio interface and calibration omnidirectional mic. All right, let's set it all up and demonstrate the calibration process. Here we are. Let's demonstrate how to calibrate the 8351s from Genelec. First thing you need to do is to download the software GLM 2.0 from the website. Once you have it, just launch it on your computer and you'll see this screen. As you can see here, it's automatically recalled my last preset. But let's do one from scratch so you can see how to do it. File, yeah. It's gonna identify the devices available. You already see is our GLM kit connected along with the microphone. So all we need to do now is to drag and drop these speakers onto the workspace. Once that is done, let's confirm the layout. This is the time where you get asked to name your group for the first time. It's also asking if I want to use the analog or the digital input. Since we're running it off an SSL analog desk, I'm just going to use the analog input. Let's confirm the group. On this screen, it's actually asking you if you want to do a single point calibration or a multi point calibration. Multi point calibration is actually taking different shots at different positions of the mics and then it's going to averaging all of them out. That could be, for instance, very useful if you have a lot of people in the room and you want to make sure you get a really consistent sound throughout the whole space. The next thing we really need to make sure at this point is to place the mic correctly. It needs to be at your ears height and exactly in the sweet spot. So you can use the meters to help you out with it. I know that the speakers are meter than 20 centimeters apart. So I want to make sure that the mic is exactly 120 centimeters from now. All you need to do once that's done, it's double click on the mic and the calibration will start on its own. As you could see, use the two sign whips to calibrate the speakers. And then we show you the results with all the filters applied and the overall curve that's been applied to your sound system. 
the calibration is complete, we can just uh, confirm and confirm the calibration after we name that again. Once that's done, the first thing I normally look into is actually the Edit Acoustics All window from the group pop-up menu. As you can see, this now we're looking at my right AD351. So if you look at the three color curves, the first one on red, that's the actual speaker response in the room with no DSP in place. If we look at the blue curve here, that's the correction curve that's been applied by the DSP to actually match and make sure we get the flattest response throughout the whole spectrum. And that's shown by the green curve in the middle. And there is a pretty, pretty nasty bump at 38, 42 Hertz. We're talking about 15 decibels. You can actually have a detailed view of all of the filters that have been applied. If you want, you can actually tweak these settings. But for most of the people, this is just the best possible optimization you can do in your room. What can we do with the GLM on top of that? We can set up two different monitoring levels, very useful. Another very nice feature of the GLM kit, when the microphone is connected, that you can always have an accurate reading of the DB SPL you have in the room. Something very, very useful, you could store the calibration we just did on the speaker, so you don't need that extra GLM kit anymore. And every time you power up the speakers, it's gonna go back to those. You would just need to go in here, and this will allow you to store the current level as a step up, alone. And the next thing you could do is stir, store current group settings at full level to send monitors. So that would basically memorize the level we're working at, DSP curves that have already been calibrated and applied, and store that information in an allocated memory inside the speakers. Of course, the funniest thing to do is actually how good it is this system. So click bypass, hear your mix, and then put the DSP in place. You'll be blown away by the results. I can tell you guys, I've been working with very different speakers throughout the years. What's really, really unique about these speakers besides the three-way design, the coax system, it really is the DSP. It's the fact that it can really tackle down all of the problems of not properly treated rooms. These speakers really let me mix it with confidence no matter where I am. I am pretty much guaranteed that what's coming out of the speaker is the mix I performed.